Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. The wedding invitations I designed and made back in 2015 have been popping up in Facebook memories recently, so I thought I'd share my process of making a modern standout invitation. As a printmaker, I was hell-bent on making my own invitations from start to finish. Each one featured a two-colour etching and a nylon plate lithograph. It was a lot of work, but the design can easily be adapted to use a less insane printing method such as digital printing, screen printing or watercolour. My prerequisites were that the whole invitation had to fit in a standard C6 size envelope and be made from a single sheet of paper. My starting point for the design were Andy Warhol's dance diagrams, which were a series of floor paintings depicting dance steps. I plotted out a waltz with some hand-carved rubber stamps, cut this out as a stencil, then used it to mark up my copper etching plates. I chose two colours to keep the design simple and iconic. The etchings were printed on one side of a 30 by 40 centimetre piece of printmaking paper, and the text was printed on the reverse from a nylon lithography plate I'd made using my computer and a digital printer. After the artwork was done, I made two tears in each sheet and folded them into what I call a snake book, which is a variant of the concertina accordion folds. For this demonstration, we're going to paint watercolours on one side of the sheet and stick some text to the reverse side. The first step is to make a mock-up of your invitation at the finished size, so 30 by 40 centimetres. Fold this into threes in both directions, then unfold it and tear along one section to the two thirds point. Turn the page 180 degrees and repeat the tear. You'll now be able to fold up the snake book and mark up each page with the text layout and the directions are all run. He said it's up now And it's good And in case it might You said It's over now In your life And they said Oh my God No you want it so You'll use this map to help make the text files on a computer and also to help in the folding process later. When you have your image on one side of the sheet and text on the other, it's time to tear and fold the invitations. Mark out everything carefully using the template to measure. I like to make a small incision with a scalpel at the fold point.
Make all your paper folds, then double check on the template where you need to tear and do this carefully and slowly with a ruler. Tearing works better than cutting for this kind of construction as it's more forgiving if your edges aren't completely straight. Fold up your invitations, finishing the edges by pressing down firmly with a bone folder. This invitation is a little thicker than normal as I stuck the text on with glue, so it's a bit harder to fold. This means I'll also have some seams showing as my printer isn't large enough to print an A3 sheet. Once you're done folding, this is how the invitation should read. As you can see, this design allows space to include a poem or some other fancy embellishment. This one is an old favourite by Emily Dickinson. When you're done with the main part of the invitation, it's time to make a simple band that will hold it together and allow you space to write the recipient's name. Start with a strip of paper in a complementary colour and measure out where you'll need to fold so the band wraps comfortably around the belly of the booklet. I like to score these fold marks with the pointed end of the bone folder. Fold in at the marks, then cut most of the way through the band at one end. Turn it 180 degrees and repeat the cut at the other end. Lock the band into itself around the invitation and write the recipient's name using a fine pointed acrylic marker. Finally, put your invitations in a beautiful envelope and head to the post. Your invitations will stand out and your guests will have a beautiful piece of artwork that they can keep. To accompany this video, we've made another that introduces some balance. Check it out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share and comment if you liked this video and stay tuned for more spines and splines projects and simple exercises that you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers!